included inland link together and push down an inland waterway to a point that can be reached by a ship where the bodies are lifted into the mothership with the use of gantry cranes or by lowering the mothership. Okay, so you have two options. Either you lower the the the, the mothership for the for the for the barge to go and rest on it with the cargo, or you use cranes to lift the barge onto the vessel. Okay? Because that vessel has been designed to carry the barges wherever it goes. It is used mostly in the US and uh, generally where we have the River Rhine and then the River Mississippi and all those things in the US where you know the, the, the transport goes to buy it. Now there are two types of barges which are commonly used. The first one is called a lash. Lash is simple one, acronym. Acronym. The L is coming from the L here. A is aboard, S is the S, S and H are from the world, the ship. Okay? And this one is designed to lift goods to the weight of 370, to carry goods to the weight of 370 tons. One ton is how many kilometers? One ton is how many kilometers? Good. What is how many kilograms? Thousand. Thousand, that's fine. You are good. Now, lights and CV. That's another type of boat, but and that this one is able to carry up to about 850 tons. I hope you can see that. So they have different type of badges. Good. And then you have something you call the piggy bag. These are semi-trailers loaded on flat cars. Flat cars are simply the rail chassis. Okay? Rail chassis is simply the train without the wagons. Okay? It has been designed in such a way that the, uh, the containers can be lifted and put on the chassis. Okay? And then it moves. These are semi-trailers loaded on flat cars, the rail chassis, usually by crane and transported as a unit. At the terminal of destination, the semi trailer is picked up by a tractor for final delivery. So what's happening is that a tractor will move the cargo to the rail terminal and then the cargo will be lifted from the tractor and put on the rail chassis. Okay? Then the tractor will go back. And then after the train or the rail, the train has done its journey, another tractor head will come and take care of the cargo and take it to the final destination. Okay? So piggyback. That's the meaning. When you are free, browse and then you see the, the diagram. We have only two weeks. So there are so many things we cannot do here. But if you get time, you see all of them. Now you have your, your phones and your laptops and they all help you to do business. Now, kangaroo system number seven. What is the kangaroo system? When you hear kangaroo, what comes into your mind? Pardon? Hop it. What again? Ouch. Pardon? Pouch. A pouch. Good. What, 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 what do you understand by that? The pouch is where the camera is to be. Yes. It's somebody carrying somebody. So kangaroo is a kind of animal that has some kind of space in there that it uses in carrying what? Their babies. So what is a kangaroo? This is a situation whereby both trucks and trailers are transported by rail. So here, what happens is that you have the tracks and you have, you have the track and you have the cargo on it. When you get to the rail terminal, it is driven onto the the track and the cargo are all driven onto the rail chassis. Okay? Now the train will carry all of them. And when they get to the final destination, the track is driven off and continue again. Very simple. That's not rolling on the floor. Roll on and roll off is different. So know that it's up to you to know the difference. Okay? In exams, I can ask you the question. When I was in school, what I didn't like was exams. But now that I'm lecturing, I like doing exams. <laughs> because I have to, I have to also, uh, I have to revenge. Okay? <laughs> okay. So that's how nobody in school likes exams. But it's good. It's good. If you do exams, it gives you the confidence. Sometimes I'll, I'll tell you, you do pastors and you prepare. You realize that when you go to the exams, it's so easy. 
is because of this symposium that the man has. I wanted you to prepare for the final examination. That's why I'm doing that. So that when it comes to the final examination, you will no longer sit up too much and learn for a very long time because we've already studied more than half of the syllabus. And so the revision is much easier for you. So when I finish with this record, I'll show you where my my what class test is coming from. Okay? And when you go to when you come when you see the exam, you say, ah, so is this all the questions? But I'll make sure that you learn. Because I want you to do well. I'm happy when I see my students work doing very well. Now some of the students I taught before they said they are lecturers, some are big guys, bank, I mean top guys and all this and all that. Because they know. Now when they see me, they are so happy. Why? Because they know the kind of thing that I I, I actually took them through. I'm very strict. But as we grow and as we meet elderly people like you, all those things go away, right? When my children were young, I could discipline them. When my boy finished KDSC, you see, now when I talk, he also talks. <laughs> I said, I don't blame you. <laughs> now, I'm not going to give any money again, so you have your own money, so you can do what you want. Yes, when you tell him to come home at six, he comes home at nine, what do you do? Yes, he's a big boy now, okay? So as you grow, I ease the pressure on you, and then you take your life. <laughs> Good. So finally, I have one boy, two girls. Okay, the girl also just got a completed labor in the national service. The last one will finish labor this year. So I'm done. Okay? It has, it has been a hell. Four years ago, they were all in the university. The boy was in final year tech. The second girl was at, the first girl was at Lagos second year. The last one was at Lagos first year. Yes. So, so I was not sleeping. You always have to do for money. And especially with the girls. And my last girl, she always needs money. <laughs> All right. The day she will finish next year, I'll be very happy. Okay, so we go on. So, we come to Korea. Have you done the last one here? Yes. Okay. So, we come to Korea and fast food systems. Okay. Now, you you see DHL, you see what UPS, yes, and all these guys, they are all part of the uh, courier and passing system. Then they are all part of the multiple transport system. Why? Because the goods normally will come by an aeroplane, they will use the pickups and the motorbikes to move it to the final destination and all that. So they are, they are all part of the um, they are all part of the multi uh, the, the multimodal transport systems. Now courier and parcel transport systems are part of the fast freight markets. They move very fast. And because of that, you pay a lot for them. If you want your goods to get there within uh, 24 hours, they'll be able to do that. But the parcel must not be too big. You understand? Okay. So courier and parcel transport systems are part of the fast freight markets. Fast freight market includes the scheduled carrying of goods from door to door within a minimum of time. So here, time is of essence. The fast freight market can be divided into four service segments with different products, structures, and routes. The different operators for the fast freight market are courier service, express service, parcel service, and integrators. As you go down, the weight increases. I hope you understand. Yes, yeah, so the, here we are talking about the weight. And the courier is also faster than the express. And the express faster than the parcel, and then the parcel faster than the what, integrators. And as we go down, the courier is lighter than the express, okay, cargo. Express is lighter than the parcel, and then the parcel is lighter than the integrators. That's how it works, okay. So it depends on how urgent and how how important that that consignment is to you that you use whatever, and then it depends on how you can afford it. You know, everybody would like to bring his car from outside by aeroplane, but why, why are they doing by ship? You can't dare. If you bring a car by aeroplane, the money for the freight can even try and buy another car. I hope you understand. So, what you do is that if you are coming to Ghana for holidays and you want to use your car, and you know it takes about 40 days uh, time to be for the car to get here, you ship it, and then 
By the time you come, it's already here for you. I hope you understand. But those who are rich, they can buy the car and then they fly it down here. And they pay more. Okay? Alright, so that's it. So the different operators for the fast freight market are follows. Courier service. Let's see how it, it works. Okay, so here, I didn't put any explanations. I want you to read around it, okay? And then you prepare your own small. I can ask you, write short notes on the following um, different operators of the fast freight markets. And then you, you will write your own thing for me. Okay, if you want to write what I've just said, fine. But if you go into some research, it will ask for more flesh to it and get more marks. All right, any question on that? Now we have what we call heavy lift transports. Okay, sometimes you see that um, a kind of cargo is being transported. Most of the time, the mining companies they are huge and awkward. Okay, so you see that so that they even have a dispatch rider in front of it, prompting other road users about the cargo that is coming because normally it takes more than half the road. In the US and advanced countries, advanced road is given to I mean other main road users so that this ones maybe are transported in the night and the other road users are prompted that the road will be very busy. So nobody should use that road between a certain time. Okay, so that is also what a heavy lift transport. That one comes by sea and then is transported by road or rail to the final destination. That is why it also constitutes multimodal transport system. Now, river sea shipping. I think I've already mentioned the other one was. Okay, so this is through shipping starting or ending as an inland port. By inland waterways and ocean going travel. It's similar to the, the other one that we discussed. But that one was batch boat. So here, here is no batch, but we use smallest vessels we call feeder vessels. You see, when goods are coming from China, it is put on a very big vessel, container vessel. Okay? And the vessel can carry up to about 21,000 tubes. Okay? One tube is simply one twenty footer equivalent. Okay? One by twenty footer equivalent. So it means that this vessel here can carry approximately 21,000 containers.